the back on this particular phone isn't flat. There's a step here, and at the top the lens pokes out a little bit. So I shan't be using double-sided tape to hold this onto the base. I'll be using a little blue tech instead. Here I'm using a half inch straight bearing guided cutter or flush trim bit to give the baseboard the exact same shape as the phone. There are a couple of switches on the sides of these things. This is the uh, on off switch just here. No it isn't. <laughs> That's the volume switch just here and the smaller one is the uh, on off switch just here. So I'm going to arrange that my side pieces are going to avoid that switch and that switch and most of the carrying in fact will be done by the bottom and the top. So the side pieces are going to need to be 20 millimeter. Safety catch works and the door was open. That was to square things up. Now I need to cut some 20 millimeter strips. Did you see my deliberate error? One part of my brain knows that I'm only going to cut back to here to keep this piece of wood pristine and I only need strips about that long. The other part of my brain thought of adding a stop block here which of course can never be used. Ah well. More measuring. Pity I didn't lock off the caliper. On a shop project this tiny, I'm not going to bother with uh, mitering the corners of this. So to make it clear that uh, it's not a mistake and is completely intentional, I've left the gaps at the corners quite large. Okay, a bit of sanding and a bit of gluing up. To have the right amount of pinch on this, I want to glue these on with not a great deal of pressure, but with even pressure, so I'm going to use the Workmate. Of course, I managed to mix up the sides.
Oh, there goes the wild geese again. Years I've tried to fix that noise. bottoms of the sides here are a little proud and I'm going to be very careful taking them down as the flatness of this base against the table is quite important so I shall just take this nice and gently and I'll just finish it off on this piece of 240 grit paper you might be tempted to do this, or I might be tempted to do this on the disc sander, but not much coming off there, that looks good. But um, I'd make a mess of it doing uh, that. I'd certainly scar the base somewhere or other. I don't have a belt sander, although a belt sander would probably be the best idea. I'm not worrying about this top piece here, because in a moment on the table saw, I'm going to cut a whole step out of this end here so that it's recessed by a couple of millimetres. I found a sacrificial block of wood that has uh, a nice 90 degree set to it. little step. All that remains now is to drill a couple of six millimeter diameter holes in the back. Blind holes, don't want it all the way through. Pop a couple of six millimeter diameter magnets in the holes. What did you guess? Or read the description all the way to the end. It's a cheapskate inclinometer, or tilt gauge. We pop the smartphone snugly into the holder here. And then have a look at the inclinometers. Now I hoped initially that there'd be some kind of built-in functionality, but uh, it doesn't appear to be adequate, so I've installed an app. And this presents the uh, tilt as a bunch of spirit levels, but uh, with numbers as well, so that's okay. Then my next thought was, do I have to find some way of calibrating this with say a plumb bob or try and find a vertical surface somewhere in this shifting house built on clay? Uh, then my second thought was, well, no, I don't actually care about the earth's surface. What I care about is the uh, surface of the table saw. So perhaps I can put the gauge on the table and press the calibrate button, setting it to zero and then pop the gauge on the saw blade and incidentally that's why there's a step in the back here it's to uh, clear the teeth on the top of the blade but when I look at this I see that it reads 88 now is that the saw blade not perpendicular or is it some fault in the gyroscopes of the phone now of course the phone doesn't really have gyroscopes in the traditional sense of a spinning mass in a gimbal. You couldn't really do that. Uh, what it's got are solid state accelerometers. Little pieces of silicon waggling about in a sort of a capacitor arrangement, measuring, if you like, the strain in each of the three axes. And from this, it calculates the angle. So maybe it's getting it wrong. So let's try calibrating it the other way. 
let's get a surface that's 90 degrees to the table and calibrate that as our zero. So what do we get? Well, it does read zero now. And as long as my set square is square, we'll be okay. And I did in fact check it earlier. So let's try tilting the blade. So on full travel, it's hovering between 44 and 45. It seems to be spending a little bit more time on 44 than 45. And that would fit with 88 degrees when it's 90, two degrees out in 90 and one degree out at 45 is consistent. Now I don't have a carpenter's 45 degree to check this against, but I do have a school set square here. And if I pop this on here, we do indeed get the same reading, hovering between 45 and 44. Thank you. 